global food shortages coming? Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. There's a lot of major indication that that's the direction we're going. Food shortages across the world. China is a big one here in the US. Across Europe, we have all kinds of things happening with farmers, crops, shutting farms down to save power. We have fuel, rationing, crazy prices, rising tensions between certain nations, China, Taiwan, us, China, stuff like that. You look back throughout history and see Pay attention to what's going on in the world, newspaper headlines, stuff like that, prior to wars. This kind of stuff is what they're talking about. Food shortages, fuel shortages, the fight for resources. Happens every time. Money, power, all those kind of things. How does this affect us as preppers? Well, <clears throat> it's just something to pay attention to, to think about. Don't get all freaked out and scared. We can only do what we can do. And we will either survive or we'll go to our Heavenly Father and everything will be perfect anyway. <laughs> so, really? You know? I mean, yeah, stockpile food, stockpile water, stuff like that. But the biggest thing that I think is really important is to be able to produce your own calories, right? We gotta be able to grow all this stuff. We gotta raise all the animals. Having lots of food storage, preps, preparations, all that stuff is very important. But we have to be able to replenish it. A lot of people talk about hunting, yeah, well, and depending on where you are, how long the event happens, how many people are around there, there's a lot of things. Hunting may be part of the game. Same with fishing, trapping, snaring, those kind of you know, those kind of things. Foraging also. A lot of times with foraging, plants are only producing what you're eating from them to forage parts of the year sometimes of the year, which are also the times that you can grow your own stuff. So learn foraging and concentrate on the items that are always available, meaning roots of plants, leaves of plants, stalks, whatever parts of the plants that are out and about that you can eat that are available year round. Because I mean, all these, like you see all the, we're back in here, back through there, all those blackberries right there. Well, they only produce blackberries, blackberries one time a year, right? Yes, so then how do you keep them if you have extra? Like we, we have extra, we have, I hate blackberries. I'm so sick of blackberries. They grow everywhere, they take over everything. It's a constant battle. I mean, I have like an acre of blackberries. It's disgusting, but can it, right? Jams, jellies, um, preserves, those kind of things you can do with blackberries. Dehydrating, uh, that doesn't really work because all you do is end up with like a lump of seeds. But anyway, have a variety of options. Producing your own is vital, vital, vital. And I get comments all the time, I live in an apartment, I can't do it. Or that doesn't apply to me, I live in the city. Yeah, it does apply to you. Can I speak to apartment gardening? Very vaguely. I'm not an apartment dweller, thus I don't know how to apartment garden. But I know there are grow lights. I know there are hydroponic systems. I know that there are ways to grow plants, food, indoors. <clears throat> I know there is. 
There are YouTubers out there that talk about this. Look them up. Learn how they do it because they're the ones doing it. I'm not. I'm out here growing my way. Raised beds, some in-ground, stuff like that. So I can talk to what I do, but I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your rear end acting like I know how to apartment garden because I don't. <clears throat> but it can be done. So no matter where you are, you can produce some of your own food. And I get it. Okay, you're like, well, it's not going to produce all my food, so what's the point? Well, every calorie that you can eat, that you can produce via animal or plant, garden or raising animals, is one less calorie that you have to take out of your food storage, which means your food storage lasts that much longer. That is vital. We want it to last as long as possible in case there is a long, extended, drawn-out event. Or <clears throat> some long, extended war or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to think about. Animal feed shortages leading to meat shortages. Farms being plowed under production facilities turned off basically to preserve uh, power. There's a lot going on around us. So stockpile food, of course. But right now I'm really thinking about <clears throat> the importance of stockpiling seeds so that you can grow your own food. Animals, yeah. Let them go to seed also. <laughs> Let them reproduce. Any excess you have, you can, of the animals, or your garden, you can can. You can dehydrate, you can freeze dry, you can jer turn into jerky, if it's meat, whatever. There are things you can do, and in limited amounts you can also freeze it. Although freezer preps aren't necessarily the best because power goes out, they go out. Now, in the dead of winter, is that less of a concern? Yes, definitely. So that's a better option in the winter time because, well, it does depend on where you live. I mean, if you live in somewhere where it's, you know, 60 to 70 degrees all year round, well, that doesn't help you. Where I am at, <laughs> if we lose power in the dead of winter, Obviously, I don't have to worry about my freezers as much because we're in the 20s and 30s most of the winter. Well, 30s and 40s maybe most of the winter with 20s part of the winter. Anyway, so that stuff will stay frozen for a long time. So it is, a, it is you know, it's an option. Put it that way. Be aware of the stuff going on. I have a feeling we're in... Wish I had more answers <laughs> than questions. But there's rising tensions all over the place. Rising tensions within our own nation of all these things that people are pushing. Some people are pushing. Some people are backing. Some people are against. A lot of people. A lot of people about to lose their jobs. That is going to be a huge catalyst right there. When people start losing their jobs. And initially, maybe not too crazy, but look about a month into, two months into, people losing their jobs. What will that be? Well, it'll be the dead of winter, right? Yeah. And you don't think that was planned that way on purpose? Okay. Yeah, dead of winter, hungry people, not good, rising tensions, rioting, looting, burning. I have a feeling somewhere December, January, February-ish, cities are going to be burning because people will be trying to feed their families. If certain things aren't backed down from, 
we're going to have major turmoil here, just like in other countries. People just want to work. They just want to feed their families. They want to take care of their families the best they can. They don't want to be screwed with. I don't want to be screwed with. I just want to be left alone to do my own thing, raise my kids, play with them, garden, hang out with my buddies sometimes, stuff like that. Just be aware of this stuff, please, and plan accordingly. It's getting into winter, yes, but you can still grow. If you have property, build a greenhouse. That's one of the things I need to do. Or grow indoors. Just think about what you can do. Do your best. Prep at a peace of mind, not out of fear. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.